What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Smash JT. And today we are going to be doing a tier list of Tommy Tellerico lies. And there's a lot of these that I didn't really know about or that I just flat out ignored while I was under the spell of Tommy over the course of, I don't know, three plus years of being friends with Tommy. And I was recently diving into the Intellivision Amico subreddit, which discussed a list of Tallarico lies, 99% not related to the Amico, but definitely speaks to the character of Tommy Tallarico himself. So I'm going to go through these and I'm going to give you guys the tier list of where I think the worst ones fall. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and bell for notifications so you do not miss an upload. And without further ado, let's dive into this. So I'm going to go in the order of what these are listed as. I don't know if this is in order for that person or if it's just no specific order, but whatever. Just so I don't miss any and get confused along the way, I'm just going to go through these one by one. Yankees Hall of Famer. After paying $25,000 to attend five fantasy camps. This one hits home pretty hard for me because I remember when I went to Tommy's house and he was bragging to me about how he played baseball for the New York Yankees. I kid you not. And initially when he told me that, I'm like, huh, you did like uh, do i need to like start looking this guy up on like wikipedia on what he's done before because i had no idea he did have this whole display of gloves and baseballs and everything and he even claimed this isn't on the list and i don't know if it's true but he claimed to have a babe ruth signed baseball that he showed me no idea if it was actually babe ruth but he did show me that and he said he played for the yankees personally for me that one is S tier. You're telling people that you played for a Major League Baseball team when in reality, you paid money to attend a camp so they can give you a plaque to say you're an honorary member of their team. That's pathetic. Next one. Featured on MTV Cribs, but no record in shows, production history, probably some other video game magazine or show. Actually, H Bomber Guy... Exposed that for being a complete fraudulent lie. Uh, and I remember when I was at his house and recording stuff, and he was like, yeah, I was on MTV Cribs. Like, he told me personally that this house was on MTV Cribs. And you know what I did? I went around telling everyone I know that I was in someone's house that was on MTV Cribs, and I was plastering it everywhere, and I was spreading the false information like fire, which I guess is how Tommy's operation works. That one is another one that's really high up on the list. At the end of the day, it's it's just it's just his house though, like whatever. It's it's still pretty high though. We're gonna put that at A tier. A tier. Plays 200 video games a year. I mean uh, Again, when I was at his house, he had a lot of video games. A lot. Like floors full of video games so in a certain light it's almost believable except for the fact that his house was a complete catastrophe it was an absolute mess and he's always on the road for video games live so i don't know maybe you could pop a game in and play it for 10 seconds i don't know if that really counts as playing 200 games a year but oh whatever we'll put that on the d list because i don't I think that's a huge lie or huge deal. People play a lot of games all the time, so whatever. Maybe he tries to, but I still don't believe 200 games a year. First American to work on the Sonic franchise. <laughs> that That is up there with S tier. I mean, that that's one of those, it's so bad that there are people out there that would believe everything Tommy said up until the point where he would spew that one. And it would stop them dead ass in their tracks and be like, I know you're not. Like, I know the people that worked on Sonic and you were not one of them from America initially. 
Maybe at some point he did, but no, he was not the first American to work on Sonic, and that's one of his all-time great lies. Taught game design secrets by Shigeru Miyamoto. Uh, his good friend Shigeru, who he worked directly on the Metroid Prime series to make it so great. And there are a couple of pictures online of Tommy and Shigeru with like 12 other people. There might be one of just him and Shigeru, but the way it's presented to us looks like Shigeru doesn't know who the guy is. He's just there to take a celebrity picture with him. And that's one of those that Tommy peddled to me of like, oh, I, I know, I'm friends with Shigeru Miyamoto. Like, he's, me and him go way back. Like, no, no, you don't, bro. You've, you've met him like once and you got a bunch of pictures taken with him. That doesn't make you best friends. But Tommy's definition is, of a friend is uh, quite variable, as we've seen. Where are we now? Going through the list here. Biggest audience, 700,000. But let's slip there, actually only 2,000. That was one of those Guinness Book of World Records ones too, but that's not the Guinness one. That was just the biggest audience ever. I think he was saying it was in China, and he named the place it was, which wasn't the accurate name for the Olympic Stadium, and he didn't even play there. And even still, he was counting people, quote-unquote, online watching it, which there was no way of gauging that. I, I don't know. That one... That one's kind of, I'd say that's a B tier. Like, yeah, he had the biggest audience ever. No, no, you didn't, but whatever. I'm not, there's, there's far worse lies than that one. Super sleeper, who only needs a scant one to two hours a night to sleep. Now, I'll be honest. For this one, I remember when I was hanging with Tommy and he would tell me, it wasn't one to two hours. It was like three to four hours or something like that. He's like, yeah, I don't need sleep. I don't need sleep. And with how crazy he sounds he kind of strikes me as a dude that doesn't get enough sleep so i i kind of actually believe him when he says he only sleeps three to four hours a night i mean that would explain his ridiculous stories that he makes up he dreams in real life because he's a walking zombie because he's never sleeping so i don't i don't really count that as a a bad lie and it's a tough one to prove so we'll put that down in d tier like okay next one worked on all the music design gameplay for all the 40 plus some amico launch games during the time when he was posting all day on atari age which we know now is not true and has been proven by multiple videos that it's stock music that he didn't give credit to uh for astro smash and for shark shark it's not his music, and it's stock music. So, yeah, no, the, he, he did not work on all the music on uh, in Television Amico. But one of the frustrations I had was he was building himself up so high with the personality of who he was, and then using that as a focal point and the selling point for the Intellivision Amico. And at the end of the day, people were drawn to, oh, wow, he's making all the music for this. And he's not. In fact, I haven't seen any proof of him making any music for any of the games on the Intellivision Amico. So, uh, deceiving the investors on that one, we'll, we'll put that at the A tier. That's, that's a pretty egregious one. Most games worked on where he would inflate the count for each platform as a separate game. I.e., if Color a Dinosaur was a multi-platform release on the NES Game Boy Master System Justice, he would count that as four separate games. I don't know, not... Not the biggest deal of a lie, because I could see how he could explain that away on working on the, the the way a new system would function and what you could work with and stuff like that. It's that's B or C tier. We'll put it we'll put that C tier. Gave himself a bunch of highly specific, paid for, questionably counted records, acting as one of the expert consultants for the 2017 print edition of the video game records for Guinness, which another one that was proved as a blatant flat out lie by H Bomber Guy, which I've since heard that Guinness has rescinded the records they gave him when he got caught lying about it, which is completely embarrassing. I'm embarrassed myself when I was at his house and he was showing me. They were just laid out on the floor. And I remember saying in my video, like he had so many Guinness records, he didn't even have the wall space for them. They were just laid out on the floor. 
they were stacked on top of each other specifically so I couldn't read them. That they were literally the duplicate record, one of the other, just like different years. It wasn't like, oh, this is a separate Guinness record for something else and something for some. And on top of that, they were never actual Guinness World Records. They were paid for by Tommy just to say that he has them, which speaks a lot to his character. That one, that that's an S tier. That is absolutely ludicrous. First musician to legitimize real music to video game beyond bleeps. Which I guess that one goes with the Prince of Persia that I was talking about, where he was like, the Prince of Persia was beep beep, toot toot. And then he actually instituted the, the sound effects and the music beyond that. Like, no, he didn't. Another one that was actually disproved with beyond a shadow of a doubt, he was not the one that did that. And uh, that's, a, that's a pretty egregious one. We'll put the beep beep toot toot one right there. I was happy to find that image of a clown in a clown car. It's, it's a very fitting image for this. Biggest music production studio in video games. Not sure how, since neither the studio nor he has no listed credits for in the last 20 years. And I can speak to that as well. He didn't really have much of a studio at all. Unless it was in a separate building that he just failed to tell me about. It looked like it was just like the third floor of his house and like a, a corner of one of the rooms. It wasn't like a mass. This is not this is not his. This is an image, I, stock image I found online of what an actual studio looks like. And I, I don't think that's that big of a lie because I didn't really hear that one. But since this is on Reddit, I will trust it to be true that he did say that. And if that's the case, that's, that's a pretty decent one. I just put it in B tier because I'm like... I personally didn't hear that one, but okay. Claims Sean Austin, Ellen, and Jessica Alba endorsed the Amico. Not necessarily. Uh, at least I didn't hear that. What happened was, at least what he told me, was that he was going to get this on Ellen, that they were working on a deal with them to bring this to Ellen, and when they did that, it was going to blow everyone's minds. And Ellen, 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 he kept saying Ellen. Uh, for the Intellivision Amico, he also said it was going to be in Bed Bath Beyond and all these other stores, which doesn't even exist anymore. But being on Ellen, it's a pretty big deal. Uh, and seeing as he never even so much as, as far as I can confirm, talked to her or anyone related to the show about it. I'd say that's that's an A tier. That's an A tier lie about the Amico. Again, not all these are directly related to the Amico, but that one, that's a good one. Photoshopped his studio logo onto celebrities' blank shirts as proof of sightings. Yes, he did. Personally, he would send these, he'd text these to me. I thought it was just like a joke between like him and like a few of the cult members and stuff like that. Like, oh, hey, like, look at this. Isn't this funny? But then I found some of them finding their way onto the webpage, or not the Miko webpage, but on his Facebook page and the whole wouldn't it be something thing. It wasn't a flat out look they're wearing this, but to someone casually browsing, they could easily mistake it as, oh, Intellivision does have that person as their signed endorser. I found Pat wearing one here, which I thought was classic. That, that was a pretty good one. We'll put that A tier. That's an A tier one. Claims to have created infamous sounds like Roblox oof sound or music for a bunch of games when others are credited, but he seems to take credit for everyone, anyone else on the project who has 10 degrees of separation from him. Another lie that was found by H. Bomber Guy in his insanely great OOF expose video. And while Tommy was embroiled in a lawsuit claiming the OOF sound could not be played without him, it was discovered that it wasn't even him doing it. It was his recording studio that took that he was taking full credit for. That one is easily an S tier. Steals local small time Emmy win credit from his co co host, TV co host, for a project he had nothing to do with. All right, so we got uh, Electronic Playground here and his quote unquote friend that he, Victor Lucas, that he would do those episodes with, that he potentially stole an Emmy from with that. Again, that's one that I'm not too familiar with. I can't speak for it, but if that's the case, that's that's pretty downright scummy. 
the weird thing about it is Tommy would still speak about Victor Lucas like they're still buddies. So if he did do that to him, I'm not sure why Victor is cool with him about that. So I, I don't know. I can't verify this one. I'm going to put it, if it is the case, I'm going to put it as B tier though. Lifetime Achievements Award from his own self-created organization. The Gang. The Game Audio Network Guild. <laughs> and for the, the Game Audio Network Guild, not only did Tommy like create and found this, which on its own is admirable, all he did was use it as a reason to give himself awards and most likely a tax write-off. But I don't, I can't verify that, so we'll just say give himself awards. So Tommy with the Gang Network giving himself awards. That's that's a pretty good one. Uh, we'll put that at, at A tier. Something funny I found online while I was researching this. Brian Schmidt wrote an article in 2011 interviewing Gang founder Tommy Tallarico and basically just giving him softball questions about how amazing Tommy is the whole time. It's like, and this is on the gang website. I'm like, talk about giving yourself a massage. Holy crap, the ego on this guy is, I mean, as we know, it's it's not a shock, but still impressive. Stole grant money from Bavaria for a self-admitted, non-existent karma engine, but this might be more of Han's crime. Um... I, I mean, maybe I think Hans worked hand in hand with Tommy. I think that's the whole reason that Hans was a part of the company and now he's no longer anywhere to be found. But Tommy was the one pushing the Karma engine the entire time. So that is Tommy's lie. And it's a big deal because they stole a lot of taxpayer money from Bavaria in Germany for a non-existent console. That's going to the S tier. And finally, I skipped over one. Oh, number seven, longest running touring concert. So this one, I I haven't like done the math on this. I believe H Bomber exposed this one as well for Video Games Live being the longest running touring concert. I mean, I I don't know. That's a B tier. That's the, I'm not gonna try to verify that. I'm gonna assume again that Reddit is right that there are other ones longer. But I do know Video Games Live has been going on for a while. So, whatever. Not the craziest lie, and he's definitely had worse. So, there you have the Tommy Tallarico tier list of lies. And, I don't know, I created this. I built all of these from, I got all these images and stuff like that to put it together because I thought it would be interesting to put them on a tier list, see where they fall, and just have pictures for the lies and be able to process this better because i see there's a lot of people out there that still don't get it about who tommy is as a person and just want to ignore it like just want to just pretend like everything's fine when no it's he's a complete narcissist that's fully self-indulgent of himself that's a pathological liar and honestly i feel gross even being associated with him Ever. And the more I step away from the situation, the more disgusted I am with all of it. And for what it's worth, I hope Tommy can get the help he desperately needs. Because this is it's getting really bad. And again, this is, this is from nine months ago. Ten months ago. There have been a lot more since then. I figured this was plenty to do a tier list on right now. If you guys enjoyed this video, you want another one. Let me know in the comments below. I'm sure we could do an endless amount of Tommy Tellerico tier list of lies. But yeah, I'm going to leave it there. And uh, let me know if I missed any. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, you stay smashing.